Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest out here straight away. You probably saw him last at Wembley helping England book their ticket to Brazil. Before he comes out there, let's just see him in action. Lampard! It's his first premiership goal for Chelsea. Lampard. Oh, it's a great hit and it's a great goal! Lampard! Oh, wow! That is an absolute beauty from Chelsea's 500 man. What a goal to bless the occasion. On the cynically brought down by Lampard. Yeah, he knows what he's doing there from Lampard. It's a card you have to take. We're going so well. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Lampard. Here he is. Frank. Wow. Looking swift. Looking good. I don't want to take a seat. Frank's looking good this evening. Thank you, very good. Thank you for joining us. Hey, congratulations. What a relief it must be knowing you, you're through, you're going to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. What a feeling. Brilliant feeling. I think it was, um, it was a really tough week for us, actually. And uh, you know the nation expects and all, everything, everyone's watching. And uh, I think two great results, really. I'm really pleased for the players and the manager because it was, it was an intense week. And when you get the result and when you're coming on your show today, I wanted a win behind me rather than a loss. <laughs> But a lot of people were naysaying already, weren't they? Yes. And that must reach you guys in the team, I'm sure. I know Greg Dyke, who's chairman of the FA, I think, yes. and various other pundits all saying England might go, they haven't got a chance of winning. Yes. That's a weird thing to, to mm -hmm. hear them saying, and it must be, a, a, I would have thought, a demoralising thing for you and the team to hear. Uh, it's a very difficult thing, actually, because I've done it with lots of World Cups where you go um, and you're normally on a bit of a crest of a wave where you've qualified, and the press asks you, will you win? And you go, well, yeah, you know, we, we hope we're going to win. And then the headline the next day is, we're going to win the World Cup. And then when you get sent home after three or four games, you know, it gets thrown in your face. So I, 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 do, I have to say, I think, if, if people do ask a question, it's very good to kind of keep it low. I think we've got a good team, we've got chances, but we keep it... Fit. So actually, having slightly lower expectations is, mm -hmm. is better for you guys going out there? I think so, because you know what, actually, just talking about it all the time actually means nothing. And I think the lads showed um, by playing, uh, getting the results is what all that matters. Yeah. Let's talk about the, uh, the new manager. Yes. OK, because we have, and, and not everyone knows this perhaps, but Harry Redknapp, who's here this evening, is your uncle. Yes. Uh, he's in the green room right now. He's managed you in the past. You've played for him on teams he's managed I came through, I, yeah, basically Harry brought me through at West Ham many years ago. Okay. So when they were looking for the manager, it seemed to me, everyone seemed to think Harry was going to get the job. Mm -hmm. Were you excited about the, the thought of working with him again in that capacity? Uh, anyone who works with family will tell you the same thing. Uh, father, sons, uncles, nephews and that stuff. And it brings up a lot of uh, complications probably. And we had a few at West Ham when we were younger. And um, there would have been a major one with Harry getting the job probably with us because the minute you're in a team with an, another manager is fine. When it's your uncle that's picking you, then, you, you know, people say, ah, because your uncle's manager. People think it's preferential treatment. They do, they do. And not to say Harry would have been, wouldn't have been a great England manager. I believe he would have been. But, um, yeah, certainly on a personal note, there would have been difficult. Listen, we would have got on with it and I would have tried to play my best and see if I got picked. And on the other side of the coin, would Roy Hudson... Roy, let me correct that, pronounce that properly, because I, I was trying so hard to get the word in Roy that I messed up. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know why I bother because he doesn't put the effort in. Okay, so uh, would Roy Hodgson make a good uncle? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he actually would. Roy, Roy is actually a very, very nice bloke, generally. And that's always a thing with managers. You see all the, the, the match things and the training ground thing, but I always judge a person first on how they are as a bloke. Whether you can talk to them, especially if I've got older, you talk more on a level. And he is a very, very nice bloke, so he would make a great uncle. Uh, here's the thing, Frank has a, another career going on right now, and these books are selling great, aren't they, as a children's author. Yes. Uh, Frank is Magic Football was the first one, and then there's, uh, the, that was actually with the Rowdy the Romans. Pirates was first. The Pirates yeah. was first, then the Rowdy Romans, yep. thanks for that title. And then Frankie versus the Cowboys crew. <laughs> That's the newest one, yeah? Yes. Okay, uh, and so and these, are, these, are, these must be fun to do. They're a lot of fun. I mean, a lot of hard work. I mean, it was, I basically come up with the idea a few years ago now. And I think towards the end of your career, you do look down different avenues, what's happening after football. And, um, and I thought the time was right to try something different. And I've got two little girls and we, I was watching cartoons, reading books to them at night. And I thought there was a, an opening for a, a football base of adventure stories. Um, and I've gone for it. But it's sweet. There's a little girl who plays football in the books as well. Louise, so I guess yes. you're thinking of yours when you... Put yeah, and my, my girls actually aren't mad on football, and I try my hardest, but you know when they're not mad, they're not mad, so, yeah. you know. Um, now, let's talk about your personal life a little bit, Frank. 
Because mm -hmm. you're engaged to the beautiful uh, Christine. Yes. Okay, Christine Bleakley, ladies and gentlemen. Who, um, uh, how long have you been engaged for now? Uh, since 2011. 2011, yeah. okay, yeah. so that's two years. Two years. Heading towards three years. Yes. She's getting to one kind of a long, you know what I mean, a long engagement. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read somewhere that Christine said that she was happy for you to organise it. Yeah, that's only where she watches that TV programme where the men... Um, <laughs> Don't tell the bride. Don't tell the bride, yeah. Is that because she, she... No, but is that because she's genuinely happy or is it she thinks, why doesn't he hurry up and do something, you know? Do you think there's a... No, it's not because they always... The men always choose ridiculous, you know, venues and, and all these things. Where and would she, you well, go? Well, I would trust you, Frank, to do it and all that. Where would you go if you had to do it? If you were organising it? Um... Have you put no thought into this no, yet? I, have, <laughs> I, have, I just don't want to give much away. Well, look, okay, give us I, a rough idea. The, no, I... Well... Would I, it be in the UK or out of the UK? Well, I've, I'd have two... I'd have a decision to make on two. I would either do a, a beautiful um, UK wedding, um, the old school that you kind of grew up kind of dreaming of. In an of. English church somewhere? Yes, without a doubt. Um, With a white the, dress? Yeah. Something for the bride, All the traditional as well. things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you would go? Or I would obviously go, I'd probably go abroad and do something like, maybe Italy would be somewhere in Europe I'd look at, but I don't know, somewhere sort of a bit exotic other than that, I suppose. And dressed as stormtroopers or superheroes? <laughs> no, so that's where they go, always go wrong. I saw one the other day with aliens, they were dressed as aliens in a bomb shelter. Yeah, but come on, those photos are gold in years to come, yeah, aren't true. they? Yeah, uh, well, listen, we have Christine's in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Here she is, it's the lovely Christine Bleakley. Hello, Christine, how are you? <laughs> Looking beautiful, she's gorgeous. Okay. So, Christine, let me ask you, would you, would you seriously let Frank plan the wedding? Oh, absolutely, 100%. He tells me when to turn up, what time. I'm very, very happy with that. It gives me any hassle. <laughs> and would he, uh, would you let him choose your outfit? Uh, mm, yeah, that's the problem. Maybe, maybe I'll do that. He can do everything else, though. I'm, no. I'm very easy. I'm very easy with it. But you, are you, can I, I don't want to pry too much, but obviously it's great for us if you would give us some information on the show. Um, <laughs> this year, next year? Just give me a date and we can move on. Well, it's going to be next year. Yeah. Our season goes through till... Yeah. After the football season ends. This is the thing. Hopefully, if fingers crossed, I'm in the World Cup. We would like to do it after that. It's a lovely thing you're doing. These are great, and uh, I wish you continued success. Good luck in the summer. I'm sure you'll Thank be you very much. on the squad. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you'll do as well as you can do Thank in you. the circumstances. Christine, thanks for joining me. Mr. Frank Lampard, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Still to come after the break, we have Harry Redknapp and Dizzy Rascal. One will be chatting, one will be rapping. I still haven't decided which is which. Join me after the break. <laughs>